during the Battle of Carthage during the Third Punic War. The Battle of Carthage was a major turning point in the history of not only the Roman Republic, but also the history of the world. The destruction of Carthage encouraged the conquest that would come to define the third largest empire in our planet's storied past. The Roman Republic began around 509 BCE when the Roman Kingdom began to expand its reign to the entire Mediterranean area. Rome was the largest empire in the world during its peak, consisting of about 20% of the world's population at its largest. In the context of the Punic Wars, Rome and Carthage were initially allies, but when Rome expanded south to Carthage, conflict became imminent. A Roman embassy to Carthage de demanded the dismantlement and relocation of Carthage inward. Unsurprisingly, Carthaginians refused. The Third Punic War began when Carthaginian land was occupied by Roman ally Numidia, and Carthage advanced in retort. Rome declared the Third Punic War on Carthage, beginning the Battle of Carthage. The battle was significant in the scope of the world because it was a precursor to the Roman Empire. After the Punic Wars ended, the Roman Republic and its government, language, philosophy, and religion spread throughout the Mediterranean and Greater Europe. These ideas spread both east and west, and the western world today is centered around the Republic's advancements. Had Rome lost the Third Punic War, the advancements, such as the Republican type of government, would have never made it to the Americas. Similarly, Romance languages would not have been born if they had not won the war and expanded their reign throughout the Mediterranean. In terms of philosophical progress, this was a major triumph for Western society. The three-year-long siege consisted of the Romans obliterating the city of Carthage through a series of attacks. Supposedly, the Romans even sowed the soil with salt so nothing could grow again. Clearly, the Romans held a deep hatred tw toward the Carthaginians as they would go so far as to ruin the soil so nobody could ever grow food here again. The Romans even went so far as to use deceitful tactics against the Carthaginians. Prior to the invasion of Carthage, the, the Roman legionaries had surrounded the city. In an act of surrender, many Carthaginians had surrendered weapons. Some counts estimate even 200,000 weapons and nearly 2,000 catapults. However, Rome decided to destroy the city anyway. Marcus Porcius Cato was a very prominent statesman and senator within the Roman Senate. This primary source clearly illustrates some of the hatred that a lot of Romans held towards Carthaginians. It reads, Who are the ones who have violated the treaty? Who are the ones who have waged war most cruelly? Who are the ones who have ravaged Italy? The Carthaginians. Who are the ones who demand forgiveness? The Carthaginians. See then how it would suit them to get what they want. That's a quote from Marcus Porcius Cato, and his advocation for the destruction of Carthage was a major factor that led to the raising of the city of Carthage and the merciless policy that the Romans adopted against them during the Battle of Carthage. Another crucial figure in the Battle of Carthage was the famous general Scipio Aemilianus, or more commonly known as Scipio Africanus. This general did battle against some of the brightest generals in the Carthaginian army. He was also the general most responsible for the destruction of Carthage, and his leadership is what led to all the outcomes that have shaped the Roman Empire today. In the aftermath of the war, the Carthaginians lost over 150,000 people that were killed by the Romans. In addition to that, another 55,000 were enslaved by the Romans. While this may not seem like a large number today, it was an in a significant percentage of the Earth's population at that time. The vast amount of Carthaginians enslaved paved the way for the Roman Empire to become even more dominant because they had so much free labor. The Roman Empire after Carthage Following the destruction of Carthage, the Roman Empire seized control of the Mediterranean. Carthage rose as prominently Christian, following the Roman invasion and surviving continuous overruling attempts, vandals, until 698 CE, when the Muslims defeated and destroyed the city completely. Despite all the progress that the Roman Republic reaped from the Battle of Carthage, the tragedy it created was just as drastic. The Carthaginian civilization was a Mediterranean power that housed a major portion of commerce in the region. 
The Roman treatment of innocent Carthaginians would be classified as genocide under modern United Nations standards. This tragedy extended beyond just Carthage, though. The brutal conquest and forced cultural assimilation became the backbone of the Roman expansion tragedy for centuries to come. The Phoenician culture of Carthage was just the first of hundreds of cultures that would be completely wiped from the face of history. The Romans achieved their goal, and today Carthage cannot be found on a modern map. With Rome's triumph, it escalated the society to that of an empire, and thus facilitated the introduction of their innovations to the Western world. All Romance languages, which were developed from Latin, would not be alive if Carthage had beaten Rome in the final Punic War. Also, the American form of government, republicanism, would arguably not exist without Rome's triumph in the Punic Wars. If it weren't for Rome's major triumph in the last of the Punic Wars, Western society as we know it would cease to exist.